All right, so let's talk about what you need to make a broom. What materials you need. You need nylon string, you need a drill, and of course a small bit for drilling your hole on your broom handle. You need a broom handle that I don't have here right now. You need a vise for flattening out the broom corn if you're going to make a shaker. You do need some kind of uh, heavy duty shears, some broom nails. You also need a broom needle. Now you don't particularly need waxed linen to sew your broom down, but I like it. So you need something to sew your broom down with. These are just kind of handy. It's a weave right tool. It's usually done used for basketry, but sometimes when I'm trying to straighten up my sewing on the broom, I'll use that. Uh, most importantly, you need a broom spindle. Broom spindle. Broom spindle. There you go. And you see this has already been loaded with the twine. And you need some broom corn. So we're going to talk about broom corn real quick here. The type of broom making that I do is kind of the old traditional broom, broom making that uses both the hurl or the broomy looking part and the knurl. Okay. And the knurl is actually what you braid with. We're going to talk about um, sizing them and, uh, and soaking them and, and dyed broom corn that does not have the knurl on it. But um, you do need some broom corn. And you need a broomstick. Now, here's the deal about a broomstick. I'll be showing a traditional finished broomstick. And I'll also be showing some uh, harvested broomsticks. You can make a broom out of anything that you can take and whack hard against a tree and it not break. So, and those to me are some of the most interesting ones. But that's basically what you need to make a broom starting out. So let's talk about broom corn a little bit. Um, when you're looking at broom corn, you're looking at the length of the knurl. Okay, so if I line this all up approximately where that hurl begins and the knurl, that you'll see that there's a whole lot of different lengths there. Depending on where you're at in a broom is what size broom corn that you want. Okay, so we are going to do a broom to start out with here. Okay, and you'll notice that this one does not require a big long braid. So the stuff that's longer and thinner, this is kind of uh, on the thicker side, I call those pretties, the guys that are short and fat, I call those uglies. Now, everybody has their own purpose, and these just tend to get underneath uh, the broom when we start layering, and the pretties, the long ones, are the ones that we want on the outside for the braid, because you can braid further, right? So I want to show you the difference uh, in using short knurl for this one and using longer pretties for a different broom. This broom is a round broom, or some people call them a witch's broom, okay? But see the amount of braid on this one in comparison to the braid on that one, okay? And of course it's bigger, but it's a layered broom. And you see also that this is just a plain finished broom broomstick. And then this is actually from some cedar from Missouri, I think. Anyway, so just uh, uh, to show you the difference in, <clears throat> these are what I call thin, long pretties. And these are going to be more on the fat, stubbly side. Good for making cobweb rooms and real good for making our first project. So the other thing that you want to do then is sort out your broom corn <clears throat> for the project that you're doing, okay? So I don't need a lot of lovely pretties on this one, so I'm going to sort through my broom corn, and then I'm going to put it in a bucket of water to soak for about 15 to 20 minutes, and it needs to be warm water, okay? 
So I'll sort through my broom corn and I'll get it soaking and when it's ready, we'll come back and we'll start tying one on. So uh, first thing we want to do is, uh, I always use my spindle to uh, get my broomstick ready. So here's my broomstick and I want to measure about four fingers up. And you can put a mark there, I don't usually. All I'm going to do is, actually, I take that back. Let's do the rounded end first. Rounded end. There's a flat end and a rounded end. We're going to do the rounded end first. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in it. And the reason for that is... There's my hole. The reason for that is, is that brooms need to hang. Uh, if they don't hang, then the fibers bend and then your broom doesn't work for diddly squat. So you want to hang up your broom. And in order to hang up your broom, you got to thread a hanger through there. So that's why you have the hole, okay? When we go to the opposite end here, we're going to make our mark. And like I say, I don't usually mark it. You could just do a little mark there or you could use a pencil or pen or whatever. Uh, but you want it about four fingers from the bottom and what we're going to do is we're going to take our broom nail and we're going to tap it in here with a hammer. One of those things I forgot to tell you needed. Okay so when you hammer it in you don't want it flush. You want it uh, I'm going to say a fourth of the way up. I don't know if you can see that or not. So it's it's in there, but it's you know it's not flush with it. And the reason that you do that is is because this is what's going to hold that tie on as you keep working through it, so that it doesn't pull off the broomstick. Okay. So I mean you want it parallel to that drilled hole that you just put in. Okay. Now. This isn't a big deal on this one because it's uniform, it's a nice finished broom handle, but if you're going to use harvested brooms, what you need to do is lay them down and see which way they're going to lay flat against the wall, and then that will be what dictates how your hole is drilled so that it lays flat against the wall, okay? So I've got my broom spindle ready, I've been soaking my broom corn here, and I'm going to make a couple jerk strings. It has been wound up with nylon string and it comes off the top of the spindle. Okay. The feet are going to go here. The broom is going to be here in your lap. All right. So, but the first thing we need to do is make a couple jerk strings. They don't need to be real long, but I always make a couple of them because when you get your broom all done, if you don't have a jerk string, you don't have anything to jerk it through there. So you're just going to make a loop and do an overhand knot. I do it around my finger and then pull those both through. Nice little knot, overhand knot. Okay, and I'll do two or three of these because they tend to disappear for some reason. And like I say, they're one of those things that you have to have when you get the broom tied up. It's my husband sneezing. Okay, so once again, there's a loop, and I'm just going to do an overhand knot, so I'll go around my finger, tuck that through, it's my husband sneezing, and we're going to do it one more time, so we've got three jerk strings. Now, you don't need three jerk strings, I'm just doing it in case they disappear, and that way you get to see it three times. Once again, I'm going to put the ends together. And I'm going to go around my finger and through the loop, tighten it up, okay? All my jerk strings. And okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is do an overhand knot. Just one little knot there, slip knot, so it keeps it from slipping off. All right, when I put this on, I want it to tighten up on the short string, not the long string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a loop and then I'm going to flip the loop 
over and grab the long string and bring it through the hoop. And that should make it tighten up on the short string. Let's see. So I'm going to take my broom handle. I'm going to put it, broomstick, sorry, broom handle. It's not critical, but it does make it easier. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is an overhand knot. That keeps it from slipping off. And then we're going to make a loop. Put it on top of your hand, so it looks like this. All right, see that's on top of? Take that loop, turn it upside down, and then go through the hole and grab the long string. Let's do it one more time. I've got my break, basically. It's an overhand knot, okay? So, I'm going to make a loop around those three fingers, and then I'm just going to lay that in my hand. See how that's over the top of that. Then I'm going to turn that loop upside down, upside down, and I'm going to grab that long piece through the loop. And that'll tighten it up. Oop, wrong my thing. So let me do it one more time. Around the three, it's on top of it. Turn it over and grab the long part of it. Okay, so I'm going to stick this on my broomstick. Now, this is something that's really important. If you are right-handed, you want your right hand, see this is uh, where the, uh, actually I got this out wrong, um, the table is. When I'm doing my broom corn, the, the, the broom is going to be underneath the table. Okay, so I need my broomstick handle to the right, okay, and I'm going to tighten this up, but my broom needs to go underneath the, the, uh, the table, because this is where all my broom corn and whatever is going to be up here, and the reason for that is if you're right-handed, you're going to jerk string out this way. If you have it the opposite way, you're trying to make a jerk from your left hand, okay, so your jerk string, or your, in my case, right hand, is going to be to the outside of the table, all right, not to the inside. Okay, so this would be the inside to the table. It's hard to see it with my hand. This is to the outside. There's nothing over here, no 